Thanks for tuning in to No Wine in No Time. I'm your host, Dave, and today we're going to talk about a sparkling wine called Cremant. So in France and around the world, Champagne is the king of all sparkling wines. But if you want a delicious lower price alternative, I suggest you check out a Cremant. So this video is going to focus on what's the similarities between Champagne and Cremant and also what makes them different. So let's talk about similarities. First off, Cremant is a term that the French use for a sparkling wine that's produced outside of the Champagne region. Both Champagne and Cremant are both produced via a method called Method Champenois. And Method Champenois is actually taking a still wine, introducing some fresh wine and some fresh yeast, and actually completing the secondary fermentation in the actual bottle. That is Method Champenois. That creates an extremely powerful, highly effervescent type of wine. So Method Champenois, both Champagne and Cremant have in common. Well, the second thing that they have in common is aging on the lees. So what exactly does that term mean? So when we age a wine on its lees, we're aging it on the dead yeast cells in that wine that were used in fermentation. So by aging on dead lees, uh, what we do is we add complexity, breadiness, and also richness to the wine. Now here's where Cremant and Champagne differ. By law, at a minimum, Champagne must be aged for 12 months on the lees, where Cremant only nine months. Now here's another difference. We talk about the grapes that are used. In Champagne, they have three very specific grapes that they use to produce Champagne. And those are Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier, and also Chardonnay. We think about Cremants, because Cremants are produced in every region but Champagne, we produce them out of local indigenous grapes. So there's a little bit of a variation on flavor as we move across France. So let's pull up a map of France and talk about where these Cremants will come from. So anytime we look at a wine label, we'll see Cremant de, and that means Cremant from, and those areas are Cremant de Bourgogne or Burgundy, Loire, Le Mans, Jura, Alsace, Didi, which is in Rhone, Savoie, and also Bordeaux. There's one Cremant from outside of France, and that's actually a Cremant de Luxembourg. So I picked one for you today to try to give you an idea of what you can expect when you go into a wine store and pick out a Cremant. So if we look at the label on this one, this comes to us from Celine. It's their Amethyst Cremant de Bordeaux. So this is a Bordeaux wine. And if we further look on the label, we'll see that it's a Blanc de Noirs. So that means it's a white wine produced or white of Noir Black. So this wine actually comes from uh, Cabernet Franc and also Merlot. So two very black skinned grapes are used to produce this light wine. Another term you may see on Cremont is Blanc de Blancs, and that means white of white, which means that only white skinned grapes were used in the producing of this wine. So let's take a look and see what we think. The first thing that we'll notice is there's a beautiful mousse coming from bottom to top. Mousse is the term that the French use for the bubbles in either a Cremant or a Champagne. Now, we will not swirl to liberate the aromas because Champagne or Cremant will bring those aromas to us via the bubbles from the bottom to the top. And the first thing that we notice is a little bit of almost kind of lemon rind and a slight bit of green apple aromas coming off, which tells us this is going to be crisp. If we go back to the label again, we notice that this is a brute style. Both Cremants and Champagnes will follow the same um, extra dry, brute, etc. type of classification. Brute is the drier of the two. So let's go ahead and take a sip and see what we think. The first thing that we notice is this is an extremely effervescent wine. 
as soon as it hits the ridges in your tongue, those bubbles liberate out of the liquid and we feel that explosiveness and the satisfaction of a sparkling cremant. When it rolls across the palate, on the front side of the palate, I'm starting to get that green apple, uh, maybe even bordering a little bit on yellow apple type flavors. There's kind of a pear-y richness in there, almost like a poached pear and beautiful bready lift of, of nice um, yeastiness from the mid palate. Then we feel the lift of acidity, which keeps it fresh and delicious and scrubs it from the palate immediately. On the back side, we feel that continuation of the richness and the breadiness, which gives it kind of a or satisfying finish. So what would a cremant pair well with? Well, cremants and champagnes uh, are very versatile and they pair with everything from steak to seafood to charcuterie trays, uh, even used in celebrations or as an aperitif before a meal. Really a delicious and um, very diverse and resilient type of choice for your next meal. So I'm going to get back and enjoy a little bit more of this Cremant de Bordeaux, Blanc de Noirs, and I ask that you come back next time because soon You'll know wine in no time.